so welcome to Screen Time with today's Communique. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have two powerhouses joining us to talk about motherhood and all things Mother's Day. So thrilled to have Ms. Candy Hughes and also Dr. Phyllis Anderson joining us to talk about, again, it's Mother's Day. We're celebrating moms the entire month. And so before we get started, we do wanna thank our series sponsor, LaTanya Austin Honorable. For all of your legal, social, and community needs, make the honorable choice. So welcome, Dr. Anderson, and welcome, Ms. Hughes. How are you guys today? I'm well. Thank you for having us. Good. I'm good. Thank you, Kenya. So before we jump into our conversation, just for those who may not know you guys, why don't you introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your career path, and then we'll take it from there. So Dr. Anderson, you go first. Okay, sure. Great. I am uh, Phyllis Anderson, and I am an educator. Um, I am the uh, chief executive officer and founder of Scholar May Achievement Place, which is a public charter school in Central Little Rock. Um, we are serving um, children um, in the Central Little Rock area in grades K through eight. Um, and um, that's basically uh, my profession. I'm just... <laughs> It's committed to children and committed to youth and have spent my entire life um, working in schools across the country. So thank you for having us. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Hughes. Sure. So um, I am Candy Hughes. I am an attorney here in Central Arkansas. I actually work for Southwest Power Pool. Um, we're a regional transmission organization. So I'm in the energy sector. Um, I currently handle all of the company's vendor contracts. I am the staff attorney assigned to our HR department. And um, I recently started to um, handle getting our DE&I program off the ground at SVP. So that's me. All righty. And probably the most important connection the two of you share is that you all are mother daughter. <laughs> that's right. Right. <laughs> And so speaking of um, Mother's Day and all things motherhood, both of you all are moms. And so I want you to think back to the time when you discovered you were expecting and reflect a little bit about um, the feelings that you had and share a little bit about that with us. So Candy, you go first. Okay, so I actually have two little ones, not so little ones. Um, have a daughter who is 10, soon to be 11, and a son who just turned eight. And so I will say um, for my daughter, I actually found out uh, I was pregnant upon returning from our honeymoon. <laughs> so, and I was, I had just graduated law school. And um, so I was very surprised and I was in the midst of studying for the bar and, um, lots of changes very quickly, but I was very, very excited. One of the things, so I have three younger brothers and I'm sure my mom will talk about them, but um, I've always, had always wanted a big family and always wanted to experience motherhood. So in spite of it kind of being um, unplanned, I was, I was very excited about the thought of me becoming a mom. Yeah. And then by the time you day came around, it was nothing. I was, you know, I was ready. I knew what you were a pro. <laughs> so I, is the key word. <laughs> you thought she was a pro by that time. Yeah, I think that like I remember. Um, I don't really remember uh, being excited or just uh, just the awesome responsibility of you know having children and and I was very young myself and uh, you know just still very much developing as a person myself with Candy. Candy was. Um, I had like a, exciting uh, deliveries with all of my children. Candy was premature, two pounds. Um, then Leon was eight pounds. Then Justice was premature, four pounds, born at home. And then Quentin was almost nine pounds. So all of them came into the world differently. Um, and I, you know, just basically how they lived their lives completely differently from each other as well. But um, yeah, I just, you know, I just think that you just the whole process of, you know, carrying life and delivering life. And, you know, as they say that that's the closest a woman gets to death when she's delivering. So you got all this joy that's also mixed in with a whole lot of pain. And that's 
almost like mothering to me. Yeah. So, <laughs> so talking about mothering, um, what advice or what words of wisdom would you give to someone who you know who's expecting this is their first child? They, they may be nervous um, with the excitement on top of it. What bit of advice would you give them? I think I would say um, to just be ready to have a lot of patience and to give up the desire to have control. Um, the, the entire process, especially with your first child, I mean, you can read all the books in the world or, you know, go to WebMD, but you really don't know what to expect when you're expecting. Um, and so just to give up the control and the idea that you have to have everything planned out every single month in the perfect way that you would like to, because, you know, your baby can feel your energy. And so if you are, you know, completely stressed out because, you know, you read something in your baby didn't meet that milestone, you know, at the ultrasound, that type of thing. Um, it'll take you to a different place that, you know, your baby can feel. So just have patience with yourself and, and give up that, that need to have control throughout the entire pregnancy. And listen to people that have had babies. <laughs> <laughs> Candy did not want to listen to anything I had to say. Like, Candy, do you see all these children running around that I've had? I know a little bit about it, but like, you know, a lot of young moms, they, you know, they read books mm -hmm. and, you know, they think that like the old wise tale or like right. the way they don't have to listen to that anymore. But yeah, just listen to people that have gone through it because sometimes a lot of things are not in the books. Well, and you, I may, I ate crow a lot with mommy. <laughs> she, I made her too. <laughs> did I tell you, I am, I did not tell you person. So I will, I will definitely make sure that you remember that I tried to tell you that. You don't yep. have to listen, but if it comes back around, I'm going to remind you. So, hey. You had plenty of crow sandwiches. Um, that's right. <laughs> and you know, that's the thing about mothering is that, you know, when you have adult children, like, you know, this is something that we're very, Corey and I are very uh, conscious of, that we're coaches now, right? Because when they become adults, they don't have to do what you say anymore. And that's just part of, you know, how that relationship evolves. So I could advise, I could try to coach, but she didn't have to take, you know, she didn't have to take my advice, but, you know, sometimes you have to learn for yourself. This is true. This is true. Yeah. Speaking, speaking of those pro sandwiches, um, think back to the time, both of you guys, um, with uh, your moms and, you know, the advice or the instructions that she gave you know over the years when you're growing up um and think back to a time is there something that your mother did or that your mother said that you in turn are now doing and you're thinking okay this is it i have completely turned into my mother and so <laughs> can't think back to a time is there something that you know you can reflect upon that your mother used to say or do and now you're saying and doing the same things and you've kind of turned into your mom. Yeah, and I think, I do, I think, and, and I, that's a high honor for me to be able to say, oh, mom, I'm, I'm speaking and my mother's coming out, right? Um, but one of the things I'll say, mom used to always make us get up on Saturday mornings to help clean up around the house. And there was really no rhyme or reason to the time. It was just, I'm ready for you to get up. So get up, get dressed so you can clean up. And, that, and that's how I am with my kids. And they're like, we got all day to clean up the house. <laughs> Why we got to get up so early? Well, you know, what is the, what is the point? And so, yeah, I definitely do that with them a lot. <laughs> and Dr. Anderson, what about you? Is there something that your mom used to say or do and now you know, you, you found yourself doing and saying the same things that she used to do or say? Yeah, I think that that's a good example. Like I'm, I'm from England, which is, a, you know, a suburb of Little Rock, a small town <laughs> or whatever. But I love the fact that I grew up in a rural area by, you know, and people would say country. But my mother used to have all of these sayings, like she had all these amazing sayings and we didn't know what they meant half the time, but we would definitely be repeating them. And one of the things that she would say is like when she woke us up in the morning, she would say, Phyllis, hit the floor. And I would be like, what? Like, what did I hit the floor for? 
Like, but you know, she meant like for your feet to hit the floor, right? Like it was time to get up and be about your business. And I think that's what Candy is probably referring to is just like, get up, get busy, get about life, get the, you know, get, it's time for you to get out of bed and, and start moving around and, you know, taking care of business. So definitely like passing that on to them and definitely like even right now, like my mother used to call her sisters early in the morning and on Saturday morning, I would overhear her having all these conversations with her sisters and laughing and talking. And that's definitely something that we, that we do as, you know, we do as well as, you know, call early in the morning and have those conversations. And I said, definitely something with, with Candy. Now I have to just kind of text Candy and say, are you up? <laughs> She'll um, say, she'll be like, call me when you get up. <laughs> right. At right. five thirty in the morning, <laughs> I could have been more polite than my mother was. She would just, you know, call or whatever. They just had that. That was just early morning, you know, just early morning ritual for them. So, um, but yeah, my mother loved working in the gardens. Like every Mother Day, I started um, like planting flowers around Mother Day weekend, just in remembrance of her. So, you know, there are there are like a few things that um, we do authentically but then some that we just try to replicate intentionally. Yeah, I love that. And I know that you guys both are very, very busy, busy women um, on the go and on the move. Um, but at the same time, you have children that you're raising. Um, and so Dr. Anderson, that you have raised. So think back to the time where you were busy and you know the, the kids were young and um, you're rushing to try to get home, try to get homework. What was your go-to make real fast meal that you could just whip up for the kids right quick so they could have something to eat? And then while um, she's answering, Candy, I want you to think of the same thing. What is the go-to? <laughs> <laughs> Neither one of us are cooked. I wonder what, I wonder what I'll say. What Candy will say. Candy, what did I prepare? Um, I was a little the, bit the chicken, the chicken, chicken and broccoli rice. Okay, okay. that was quick. Okay, yeah, chicken, chicken and broccoli rice casserole. Yeah, okay. yeah. So I guess that I would say hamburger helper. Yep, I was gonna say hamburger helper. Because <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I was young and I was still in school and. You know, I was, I got all of my degrees, raising children and everything. I wasn't necessarily a fast food mom, but I was not the cook. That was not my ministry. And, but they, but they, they grew up okay, I guess. Yeah. So, I mean, you can cook. That's the thing. That's what I tell people. Like, we can cook, but we just don't necessarily prefer to do it. Mom is more of like a, a holiday cook too. Yeah. So, I mean, she's, she's really good at Thanksgiving, Christmas, those type of dishes. Um, but even just day to day, um, everything that she cooked then and now I like, and I appreciate, and I appreciate like now if she cooks broccoli and, broccoli and cheese and chicken casserole, or if she cooks, you know, the vegetable stew, like those things that she cooked when we were growing up, it's real nostalgic for me and the cornbread and, you know, skillet cornbread and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm not a, I mean, my kids love chicken Alfredo. That's quick. Hamburger Helper is quick. Salmon is quick. Both of them like salmon. So um, a lot of times, though, I may, you know, pull out a bird's eye chicken and whatever out of the freezer and throw it in the skillet. So I think they're turning out okay, too. <laughs> Cross my fingers. <laughs> my, you know, my husband, my husband loves to cook. So, you know, they say when men cook, it's like, uh, you know, you know, it's like a hobby, right? Like for women, it's a chore. Right. So, mm -hmm. You know, he, he loved to, to uh, experiment with different recipes. So like Candy said, I, like I have greens, you know, like my greens are like, I think famous. World famous. Like, famous. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yep, they are. So Mother's Day is, is this month. Um, Mother's Day is a, a special holiday. And so what do you guys plan to do for the holiday? Well, for me, <laughs> we'll let her go first. <laughs> I defer to my I mother started, on Mother's Day. I started traveling on Mother's Day. How many years ago, Candy? Oh, a long time ago. I mean, 
And it was a self-care move. It was just a self-care move because it was like, I want to do something that I want to do. And it wasn't necessarily like people showering me with gifts that was valuable. I just was like, if I want to go, you know, just go to Atlanta and have dinner at my favorite restaurant and, you know, be able to go to the mall. I just wanted to have that weekend to spend it the way I, I wanted to spend it. So we, I traveled last, the last, uh, during the pandemic was the first time I was not able to travel along on Mother's Day. Are you traveling this year? I am traveling this year. You are? It's Sunday, right? It's, it's, Oh, we'll talk about this offline. See, that's, that's the, the problem. We'll talk about how the daughter becomes the mother. <laughs> that, that, that's the problem. That's trying to keep up with me. Me, <laughs> me and my <laughs> brothers are always like, what's mom doing? Me in particular, my brothers are out of state, but me, I'm like, how are you going to leave me? You know, but I, I, you know, I want my mom to do absolutely whatever it is that she, she wants to do. For me, I um I like to just have some quiet time. I know a lot of people want to spend their Mother's Day with their children, but it is nice to have um a day just of of quiet time and to to not have to wake up early to wake somebody else up early to clean up or help you clean up or anything like that. So my my little form of self care. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> self care is indeed. The term of the year, I think. <laughs> so yeah. Y'all need it. Yeah. So, well, listen, this has been a rich discussion, a very thought provoking discussion. And I love to see you guys go back and forth with each other. <laughs> That's, <very powerful. laughs> That's real you know, life. I tell her all the time when she, you know, she, you know, she's, she's such a professional. I'm so proud of everything that Candy, you know, Candy is doing in the community and professionally. And you know, when she starts to, 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 I tell her, make sure you tell your story, not mine now, there's a separate, <laughs> separate, when you start to tell your story, not mine, but we, but we, you know, we have kind of grown up together and like, I, you know, I love having her as a thought partner. She's definitely a thought partner. It's definitely like, you know, this mutual respect that we have for each other. And the, and the gifts that that each of us have, and we both understand that we're supposed to be using those in a certain way. So I'm always rooting for her. I know she's always rooting for me. And, um, you know, it is just, it's just a beautiful, you know, just a beautiful relationship um, yeah. right now. Yeah, I think whenever you can, whenever you can make the shift from being, you know, mother, daughter to being friends, it's, it's important and to be able to say, you know, I have this wonderful mom, but she's also my friend, good girlfriend too, you know, is, is important. And I have to tell my daughter all the time, like, I'm your mother and I'm gonna always be your mother. But when you can just distinguish between us being friends and mothers is the day that we become friends. <laughs> so, yeah. so right now we're still mother daughter, but when she can tell the difference between the two, then we'll become best of friends too. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that with her. Oh, I yeah. love that. I love that. I still try to coach. I still try to coach it every now and then. Well, and I listen. I yeah. listen. I think I listen now more than I did before, yeah. <laughs> quite honestly. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're both members of, of Alpha Kappa Alpha. And that has been beautiful being able to enjoy the sorority together, uh, you know, doing the work of the sorority, traveling the conferences together, her allowing me to hang out with her at conferences and not acting like, oh, I want to, yeah. you know, like that, that's like really, really, that has meant a lot to me also as well to just to be able to enjoy a lot of things. And, you know, I, I, I do have a daughter-in-law as well, a, bo a beautiful bonus daughter. Um, and so it's, it's great to have, you know, the both of them and they, they like me, I think. <laughs> yeah yeah you know you have to love your parents but you know right. a lot when they yeah. when they like you so yeah. I, absolutely hmm. yes I love that that you you both love each other and you both like each other yes 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 there's and there's a difference for sure <laughs> so yeah. Dr. Hmm. Anderson, 
Ms. Hughes, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank you for having, thank you for having us. Many, many, many blessings to both of you all for Mother's Day. Mother's Day is every day. So happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. That's a wrap. All right.